Happy day, everybody. Today we're making pot roast. Very easy pot roast. Not a lot of fanciness going on here. And you notice if you watch any of our other videos, this is gonna be very simple. Anybody can make this. Trust me, if I can do it, anybody can. Um, the hardest part about this is prepping up all the veg. Got some little potatoes, which the prepping up was washing them off. That was as far as I got. Uh, making sure there weren't any craziness going on inside of them. I've got carrots that are cut about an inch thick. Just use regular carrots. You can use baby carrots too, then you don't have to do anything to them. Celery cut in about one inch pieces. Got onions, I got mushrooms. If you like all these, you can add them. If you don't like some of these, don't do it. You can take them out. You can add other stuff, green pepper, kind of whatever you like within reason. We got one old big old blade steak here. Um, this thing weighs about four and a half pounds, which is a lot of meat. It's amazing how expensive meat's gotten these days in the market. Um, to get this started, all we're gonna do to this is just salt and pepper on both sides. Pretty simple so far. You do not have to put flour on this. Some people do, but I do not because we're adding some flour to the pan in a little bit because we want to thicken it up and make a gravy out of it. And no, we don't want to use one of those gravy packets. Don't do that. It's mostly just salt anyways. This will come together really easy. I want to brown this off pretty good. So I've got my pan on a pretty high heat. I'm going to add about three or so tablespoons of oil. Give that a second to get hot. Um, the other things we're putting in here is garlic, tomato paste, like I said earlier, a little bit of flour. Uh, got some Worcestershire sauce and some beef stock. We want to give this a nice brown because that just creates flavor in here. It's going to make it absolutely delicious. Um, this is going to take about four or five minutes per side. Maybe three to five minutes per side, depending on how hot the pan is. It's really important to try to use one of these Dutch ovens, enamel-covered iron pans, because they really disperse the heat really well. You don't have to be really fancy with these. I've seen these at Walmart for like 20 bucks, maybe a little smaller than this one. I've got a lot of bags, so I use a bigger one. But for $20, you can go get one. I know everybody has their own budget. You don't have to buy the top of the line, whatever you think that is. Um, and we'll be back in a few minutes as soon as this is done browning. All right, our meat's done browning and I just took it out. It took about eight minutes or so um, to be done. So we're gonna start with the vegetables. Start with the heartier stuff first. The carrots and the celery. Try to keep your hands out of the tomato paste. A lot of fun built up on the bottom of this pan too, um, which is good because that's just flavor. Fond's a French word for sticky goodness, I think is what it, the official thing is. But as we add more veg to this, and the veg sweat off some of their liquid, we're going to be able to scrape up all this fond off the bottom of the pan because there's a lot of really good flavor in there. You want to let these cook for two, three minutes, maybe four or five minutes, just to get a little bit of color on the 
the vegetables. I'm going to go ahead and add the mushrooms. And the onions. Those all mixed around. This is a lot of veg, but it's also some, some of my favorite part of this whole thing is the vegetables. How they taste when they come out. I'm gonna add a little bit of salt to these guys and a little bit of pepper. We really just want to keep this stirring up. So, so far pretty easy, right? I'm not putting in the potatoes right now because if this is going to cook in the oven for two and a half to three hours or so, maybe two to three hours depending on your oven, um, cooks at 350. But if I put the onion or the potatoes in now, they'll get super mushy at the end. Like, just disintegrate when you touch them. Mushy. So I'm gonna let this, let these guys sit out for about half the time it cooks. So maybe after an hour and 15 or so, I'm gonna go in there and add the potatoes to the pot. We'll show you. But these guys are getting pretty happy here. Really starting to release some of their liquids. The salt helps that happen. Well, my wife actually makes this, she makes a totally different recipe. There's whipping soup mix involved. It's delicious, but this really doesn't need it. Um, you see just a few things that really should smell the way this is coming out right now. It's really good. Okay, all those little fawn pits pretty much off the bottom of the pan. I'm going to go ahead and add it's about five cloves of garlic. Um, you can go crazy here. I mean, I I would say you could start with two or three cloves of garlic if you want. That was, I think, four or five chopped up. You could use 15 if you really like garlic. I like garlic, but not that quite that much. Get that mushed around. Incorporated well, boy, is that starting to smell really good. This is a six ounce can of tomato paste. Buy good tomato paste if you can. And this is going to add a lot of flavor, plus, it's really going to thicken our gravy that's going to build in here as it cooks. We just want to get this mixed in here. Oops. Five second rule. Maybe that was a little longer than five seconds. But the tomato paste adds a lot of good flavor to this too. Um, we're using beef stock in here today. You can start with water and use bouillon if you want. Uh, I just had a box of beef stock sitting in the pantry, so that's what we're using. Boy, this is smelling really good. But the tomato paste is an, you know, a kind of an important part of this. I don't know how 
I've never tried to use fresh tomatoes in here before, but I know the tomato paste works really good. Put tomato paste in a lot of different dark stocks because it adds a lot of really rich unctuousness to it. Um, just great flavor. Now I had an oil in the pan, which it didn't all get taken up by roasting off or searing off the, the meat. So we're just gonna add some flour. This is about three, three and a half tablespoons. I just kind of did a scoop. You use up to a quarter cup. Um, that's gonna help, again, make our sauce that we're making out of here. You just wanna stir that up. And we wanna let this cook for a couple of minutes. You wanna let it cook because it takes out all the flour taste. Um, really just using the flour, well not for any taste whatsoever, but just to help thicken up the gravy along with the tomato paste. But you wanna make sure that it's well incorporated. You really, as you stir everything around, it should be consumed by the tomato paste that's in here. Tomato paste gets really soft after it gets warmed up. Um, it's very simple. All right. So this is four, 32 ounces, so four cups of stock. We want to get this, everything well incorporated in here. This is going to be very thin at first. Trust me when I say it will thicken up inside the oven. Get everything off your sides. Keep your workspace clean. Makes cleanup much easier if you clean as you go. Just trying to get this to come up to a good simmer. Well, not really simmer, but just warm it up to get everything started. Like I say, this is very, very thin but it will thick it up into a nice gravy as it cooks. Now, if you don't mind mushy potatoes, you could put them in right now, but I promise you they'll kind of disintegrate even with the jackets on them still. So I'm going to put this back in here, and any juices that were in the pan. And you kind of want to get this down in that gravy. That's what's going to make the meat really get tender. So the only thing left to do now is to wait. Oh, totally forgot. Worcestershire sauce. Maybe a tablespoon, maybe two if you like it. Um, it just adds a nice richness to the gravy. If you don't like Worcestershire sauce or don't have it, don't let it stop you from making the recipe. Boy, it smells really good. 
So you really want to just trust the process, the cooking method here. The only time we're going to take this off in the next two and a half hours is in about an hour and 15 minutes to put the potatoes in there. Hour and a half, hour and 15 minutes will give them plenty of time to cook and be really happy. Um, we're going to get this in the oven and we'll be back. All right, so it's been about three hours. I just pulled this out of the oven. This is uh, pretty amazing how thick the gravy got. I told you it would get thick. <clears throat> and I didn't do anything to this except for at about an hour and 15, hour and 20 minutes, I dropped in the tomatoes, or the potatoes, not tomatoes. Um, and they're nicely cooked. This meat is just falling apart. Cooked all the way through. Looks pretty amazing. I'm gonna plate some of this up. Some of this good veg. As I said earlier, I love the meat too, but I love the way the vegetables taste in here. Carrots and mushrooms and the onions, celery, just all really works well together. Okay, so this is all done. It's time to give this a taste and have some dinner. Can I taste? Of course you can. Oh my God, this looks delicious. Mm. It's the best. Pretty tender, huh? It's delicious. Mm -hmm. This was my plate, right? Mmm. It's got a good flavor. Very rich. Well, it's amazing how the the gravy works. You can put a little bit more gravy on there if you want. Mm -hmm. It starts out so thin and over the time in the oven, it just thickens up on its own. You really don't have to do anything to it. Nothing was added to this and you saw it took the lid off. It's real simple. Mm -hmm. You need some more gravy? Just a little bit. Okay. Or maybe more. All right. Well, thanks for watching. You all have fun out there. Be kind to each other, and we'll see you next time.